This is the What's in the Bag 2023 updated version. So we've got the three same wedges as we started the year with. The most lofty club in my bag is a 58 degree sub 70 wedge. It's got my dad's name stamped on the back. I've had this in my bag now for nearly, what, 18 months. So and I prefer this over the Vokey mainly because of the size of the head. It just gives me that little bit more confidence. The 58 degree wedge is fitted with a KBS Tour 120 stiff shaft. So my second most lofty club in the bag is a 54 degree SM7 Vokey wedge in a black nickel finish. It's in the F grind, so it's the sort of fine grind. It's got 14 degrees of bounce. I've had this in the bag all year. And before that, it, you know, they've bought out a couple of models since, but I really like the look and also the flight that I get off this 54 degree wedge. I've had it stamped by Titler, so it's got cack handed on, sort of reference to when I used to sort of chip cack handed and play some of those short shots with my hands, my sort of left hand below my right. So my third and final specialist wedge is an SM7, which matches in with the 54 degrees. This is a 50 degree in the F grind again, and this has got 12 degree of bounce. I got this wedge exactly the same time as I got the 54, and it sort of remained in my bag all year. Both Vokies, the 50 and 54, are fitted with an SM7 wedge flex in steel. All the wedges are standard length, but they are two degrees flat. That's really just to eliminate sort of the left miss, which generally was my bad shot with my wedges or short irons. So each of the three wedges is fitted with a Golf Pride MCC plus four grip. Basically what that means is that the bottom of the grip is exactly the same thickness at the top. So when you grip it at different places and put your hands on that grip, it should really feel the same in thickness. It's also in a yellow and blue, which is my local team, Talk United's colours, which I try and support them when I'm not playing football on a Saturday. I've always tended to use the dark finish as well in my wedges. For me, it makes the club look slightly smaller. But also for when it's sunny in the summer, it sort of stops that glare that you will get off a sort of stainless steel club. For me, I quite like the finish. I've always used it. Iron-wise, there has been a major change this year. I started the year using the Cobras, and now I'm into the Nike Vapor Pros. I was lucky enough to be sent these by one of my subscribers, who said that I could sell them to buy a new camera or equipment that I required. But I actually really like these. I did a bit of testing and... I've always liked Nike stuff. I think these were made in like 2012. When he sent them to me, the 7-iron was the only club that had been used. But being forged and having a full season, there is a few marks on them now and a bit of fading. But they look brilliant at a dress. They got a little bit of help as well with a sort of small cavity fitted into the back. They did a combo set as well, which is slightly easier to hit longer irons. I've actually purchased a set of them recently as well. So I may experiment a little bit with putting a couple of the longer irons in, which are slightly more forgiving and should give me a slightly higher ball flight. I tend to still hit the ball quite low with all my clubs. So that little bit of extra sort of help, a little bit of weighting in a different position might give me a slightly higher ball flight in the longer irons. These irons are fitted with a dynamic gold, which is the S300, so a slightly stiffer shaft. It's very similar to what I've been using in the Cobras, and also when I got fitted at sub-70, I was using a very similar shaft. It's a shaft I've used quite a long time. It's a shaft I like as well. And all the grips are the original Nike sort of Golf Pride Tour Velvet style in standard. I don't have any extra tape underneath them. I do clean them regularly and they're still in good condition for a grip which is what, nearly 10 years old. I've checked all the lofts and lies and they're standard, which is pretty much what I like in an iron. I don't really like them bent or um, slightly more upright or flatter. I tend to just use a very sort of basic standard setup with my irons. I'm also tending to hit these probably a club longer than my Cobras as well, which is good. I was, um, I felt like I was losing a bit of distance. I was very straight and very accurate with the Cobras, but I've sort of remained quite accurate with these clubs, but I've just gained that sort of seven to 10 yards each club, which is sort of gapping in nicer than what I was actually using originally. I'm using four to wedge in the irons as well as a setup currently, which is what generally I've always tended to do. So this is where we give ourselves our first option. And I've now got a five wood which and a two iron. So it gives me two very different ball flights. They go very similar distance. I hit them sort of 220 to 230 carry wise. So the two iron is the Ping Zing two iron, which I've had in my bag. 
for a number of years you'd have seen it in quite a lot of vlogs it's fitted with a zz65 shaft it's not the best looking two iron in the world there are better looking clubs these days and when people pick it up the action is god that looks ugly um, but it has worked and served me well it's a zz65 shaft as i said and again i've got the yellow and blue mcc plus four grip which probably needs changing i can actually see a little thumb mark there just to the left of the sort of golf pride logo the five wood option is the ping 430 i love this club i, I bought it at the start of the year when i also got i don't think he was too happy about being dropped out the bag it's just literally attacked me so it's the ping 430 it's 18 degrees in the five wood again that club is changeable so i can change the loft slightly and it's a beautiful looking golf club it's a real it's a, it's a new addition to the bag it's i've had it in the bag since sort of early in the year when i also bought the driver to match in it's really become my go-to club which i now hit off the tee on tighter holes and also just gives me the option of actually hitting from the from the sort of rough i can get it out the semi you can also get it out a slightly deeper rough gives a really good flight high flight nice and spinny probably carry sort of 230 but i tend to hit this more than i'm hitting the two iron at the moment but the two iron gives me the option if i'm playing a windy links golf course i might play that if i'm playing a parkland golf course i will use this club because it will give me more carry and probably more versatile so the five wood is fitted with a tour two zero in the black that's a ping shaft it's the one harry fitted me for i actually quite like the shaft it's a little bit more flexible than what I'm used to, but I've got used to it and I like the fact that it gives me a slightly higher flight. So I've literally just purchased this this morning from Harriet Cherson and this is 433 wood by Ping. 15 degrees and it is the max version, so it's a slightly bigger head. You can adjust it, so the club is 15 degrees, but I've actually took it down slightly, so it's slightly stronger than the 15 degrees again I, want, I really wanted like a 14 14 and a half degree fairway wood which i can sort of it's a bit of versatility so i can hit it off the tee when i'm not hitting it too well with a driver i can get a good line on the fairway and on the longer par fives i can probably just about get up with this club i'm hoping it will sort of go sort of 240 to 250 when hit well so the three wood shaft is different to the five wood which might surprise a few people again it's a 75 s so it's 10 grams heavier than what the five wood plays it's also a slightly spinnier shaft so that should again help me get the ball into the air and uh, being slightly heavier it will feel fractionally stiffer it will play fractionally stiffer as well although you see a higher ball flight again I've, like i said i've not tested it on the golf course grip on both fairway woods is basically just the golf pride tour velvet 360 so it's basically no logos on it at all if you change the loft and the lie angle of the club the grip, you know, the, the label's going to still, there's no label, so it doesn't really matter about that. I know some people are quite anal about having the grip with the actual line or alignment aid or even the logo literally going down and on the front of the club. That's never really bothered me, but this just gives you the option. If you do change lofts and lie, then it won't make any difference to actually how the grip feels or how the grip looks. Underneath this head cover, which is nicely um, sort of logoed and personalised, is an old club it's not the g430 driver which i had at the start of the year we've actually now gone gone back to the cobra f8 driver this is not the plus version so it's the sort of higher spinning one um it's had a few battle scars there's a few little chips and dinks in it there's a little bit of rust around the actual um fitting sort of area uh and also where the weight is as well but this is an oldie i do spin it probably a little bit too high it spins at sort of high twos into the freeze which i'm obviously losing a bit of distance with but i feel that i can sacrifice a bit of distance for a bit of accuracy and this has been back in my bag a couple of months now i still think this driver looks absolutely amazing from a dress i like the double crowns you've got two colors i also like the shading in the sort of towards the face and then also the sort of speckled finish on the back it's nicely rounded as well i just think there's not many better looking drivers that have been produced and definitely this is my favorite cobra i've tried different cobra drivers thinking that i might stick with cobra but i've never hit anything as consistently and as well as this and this is back in the bag for this sort of the remainder of the year the shaft although it's slightly sort of the label slightly worn it's a um graphite design and it's the tour ad in black and it's a di6 and it's the x so it's stiffer than 
both my fairway woods. It's a shaft that I've moved around over the years. I've taken it out of different clubs and different adapters and moved it into my current driver. It's a shaft I trust, the shaft I like. It's I know it's unusual to have a stiffer driver shaft than sort of the rest of your clubs, but I just feel that I quite like the fact it's stiff. I can hit it slightly harder at times and feel like I'm not going to lose the ball sort of left or right. Um, and it's a stable shaft. It's the shaft that I've, you know, like I said, I've used for a number of years and I've got good experiences and good sort of feelings when I hit the shaft. The grip fitted is a multi-compound. So it's got basically corded at the top, very soft at the bottom. It's the aligned version. So on the back of the grip, you've got a straight line. So it just fits in your hands better. Some people like the actual alignment aid. I've done a video actually on these grips and the uh, sort of the negatives and positives of using it. I'll be honest with you, the main reason I've got this grip on my clubs is I like the colour. It matches in with a head. That's the only reason, really. I don't use the alignment or don't really feel that, that makes much difference to me. I do like the multi-compound feel. I like the fact that it's soft on the right hand and your glove hand is sort of on the harder sort of corded area. But it's a standard grip. There's no extra tape. It's literally how it comes. Anyone who watches the channel may have noticed that I have changed putters and changed style completely. But I actually do have two putters, both exactly the same heads. They're in the Rossi, the Rossi 2 version. And I've got a DFX one, which is brand spanking new. I bought that in the last sort of month, month and a half in the black finish. And I've also got the original Dual Force Rossi 2, which was kindly given to me by Paul Tolly. Although they look very similar, a dress with a sort of half moon shape. And also they've got the same three lines on the sort of leading edge with the two lines also on the back of the putter to sort of help a line. The actual faces of a moving round, although both black, they play very differently. Although both the faces are the same colour, this putter here, which is the sort of original Rossi 2 that came out sort of in the early 90s, has got like a slightly harder face. So this is going to be my winter putter. The brand new DFX putter, this tends to be quite a soft face. So I'm going to tend to use this on the summer or on quicker greens. It's exactly the same as the other Rossi what looks wise other than it's a black head and that one's a silver head. That doesn't really bother me particularly, but this is going to be my sort of summer putter. Grip wise, both are f fitted with a two thumb grip. This grip is slightly different. It's not on as you would expect it to be where you use the sort of the two thumbs going sort of either side of the grip sort of that position. You might have seen Paul Hendrickson sort of experiment in, within the past. If I grab the face of the putter and show you that and I just move the grip along, you'll notice that the grip is actually on the side. So the two thumb sort of front area actually faces the club face. It's the shorty version too, so it's quite a small grip as well. Ball wise, I'm still using a tight list. I trust Titleist. I'm using the Pro V1X as well, which I've used sort of the last 15 or so years since it first came out and the different variations of that particular ball. I tend to mark it. This one's been used, as you can see, with sort of black random spots. And then I sort of do a line as well around the Pro V, like labeling to sort of align, to line myself up when I putt. I've been experimenting a bit with a yellow golf ball as well, but I haven't got any yellow balls at the moment. So I've just switched back to white. I honestly don't mind what colour I use as long as it's a Pro V1X. That is a lot of gloves. Glove wise, I use anything really, but it has to be leather for me. Um, I've got some Cobra ones here. I've got some Foot Joy. Anything leather. I don't like the feel of a synthetic glove and I've not found a weather glove that I actually like yet. So I just carry lots and lots of gloves. If it starts raining, I would just use a different glove. Here's another sort of addition to the bag. I'm still wearing the ShotScope watch. It's the one that I got when um, ShotScope sponsored Dan's channel and they kindly gave me a watch, which I'm still using. I really enjoy using that. Never thought I'd enjoy using like a watch. I've always used sort of a laser. I had a Bushnell laser, but unfortunately it stopped working and I've not replaced it yet. So I've just got my old one here, Pargate. Don't know really much about it. But I find it quite useful to have both options. I've had a couple of occasions where the shot scope watch has stopped working. I've forgotten to charge it once, which was my own sort of poor planning. But I've also played courses where they haven't remapped the golf course or the watch has started to play up. I remember a particular incident at Staden Heights where there's a few new holes and the watch didn't work. So by having both options, I feel like I've covered 
both areas. If I do want to get an exact pin, then I can use the laser. Most of the time, the watch is perfect. I can If you can see where the pin is, you can work out more or less your yardage. But I do carry both of them in the bag at the moment, the, wrist on, the watch on my wrist, but I also do carry a laser in the bag. Drinks-wise on the golf course, I'll always sort of make my own sort of juice up or take a Lucasade and then a water as well. You can always important to have lots of sort of liquid refreshments. I'll also carry some sweets. I've just at the moment got one of these slim fast bars, which I actually quite like the taste of. I'm not trying to lose weight. I've also got an Alpine light bar. Sometimes I'll have chocolate in my bag and sometimes some polos just to suck on. We, I mean, I play at different times of the day. Sometimes I play early, sometimes I play late and sometimes I play twice. So it's important to always make sure you've got enough sweets, enough, enough food really. Um, ideally, I'd have some fruit in there, but I won't, I'm won't. i not going to lie to you. Generally, I don't eat fruit on the golf course unless it's available and free because I tend to leave things in my golf bag and they tend to go off. Bag-wise, I'm currently using a Mizuno one. I've just literally, Dan, I didn't have a bag, so Dan said I'll just take one that he had lying around the office. So I'm just using the Mizuno one. Best thing about this bag, it's fully waterproof, so everything's sealed, which is brilliant. I would never use a bag now that's not waterproof. Even in the middle of the summer, we get caught out there. It's actually, it says, I don't know anything about it. It's obviously got the dry bit here. Every pocket sealed. It's a pretty good bag. It's lightweight. It's double strapped as well. It's, it's got a stand on it. Um, I've had it all summer. I do like it. I also like the color as well. It's not a bad bag. Um, probably people know a little bit more than I do about it. But there it is with my clubs in the bag.